All right, this is synchronized cardio version. First thing we want to do is make sure we do have all of our equipment here. Uh, we have a monitor with defibrillator and those defibrillation pads. Got all that. We've got our patient hooked up to a four lead EKG. Here's our defibrillator pads. Uh, we can consider the need for medication to sedate the patient. If we want to use some Versed or Valium or whatever to help sedate the patient, we can consider that. And then also if the patient is, uh, SpO2 is less than 94, we also want to make sure that we do have oxygen on the patient. And of course we have our PPE on. First thing we want to make sure we have a good patent IV and we do have oxygenation like we mentioned if we need that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn on our monitor here and identify the rhythm that is necessary for a synchronized cardio version. <clears throat> so we want to, we see that we do have a supraventricular tachycardia rate of about 176. Our blood pressure here is 94 over 61. Our SpO2 reading is 94%. We want to assess pulses and also determine their uh, level of responsiveness. Make sure we do have pulse with that. Uh, we want to ask the patient to see if they have any known allergies in case we do need to use any medicine and then go ahead and consider any medicine that we want, want to give the patient to sedate them if necessary like I mentioned the Versed or Valium possibly or whatever your protocol has. We've already got our four lead on of course that gives us our reading and then we want to go ahead and attach these defibrillator pads. This one will go over the right side of the chest. You want to avoid any pacemakers or implanted uh, defibrillators, anything like that. This one will go on the left side, mid-axillary, just underneath the armpit there. And then you want to hook that up. Make sure you're all hooked up to your defibrillation machine. <clears throat> you also want to make sure that your patient's not laying in a puddle of water. Uh, there's no metal laying across the patient anything that might cause a spark or you know gasoline or any combustibles and also if there's any uh, hyperoxygenated areas you might want to consider removing the patient from that because it can be very flammable. We've determined the need that we do need to go ahead and synchronize cardiovert. Um, we'll go ahead and activate the synchronizer mode. On this particular model is similar to a life pack. You'll actually hit the synchronize button there. You're going to want to turn your energy down here. It's set at 200. You're going to want to follow ACLS protocol for that. Sorry, I just turned the alarms off. And uh, because it's regular and narrow, we're going to start at 50 joules. Now we're watching the monitor here. We do have our markers there at the top of the uh, ECG tracing that shows that it is synced up appropriately and that we're ready to now uh, defibrillate the patient at 50 joules. Now you do want to make sure that nobody is touching the patient. Go ahead and call out all clear and then you'll make sure you charge it up. Now I'm leaning over the patient here just to kind of help give you guys a better view and then you'll have to hold down that shock button until it delivers the shock. And it might take uh, up to 15 seconds, it just depends. You'll have to look at that. Then following the uh, defibrillation or the cardio version, I should say, then you'll wanna reassess your patient, uh, reassess your rhythm here. We did have a rate slow to about 80. You'll go ahead and reassess your vital signs. We got a new blood pressure here of 121 over 79. Our SpO2 reading did come up to 97%. And you'll want to be talking with the patient to make sure that they uh, do have uh, desired effects and that there are no adverse side effects with that. And of course, before you ever shock anybody, if possible, you definitely want to warn them that this is going to happen.